Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. In my two Windows 11 Lex DVM tutorials, we learned how to use Distro Builder to repackage the Windows 11 distribution ISO and perform a Windows 11 installation on a Lex DVM. Typically, Lex DVMs are created from an image just like a Lex D container, and so they do not have to go through an installation process as we did with Windows 11. Since my Windows Lex DVM videos, I added instructions to the show notes to add the Windows Red Hat Vert IO drivers to support screen resolution changes and also to properly support the network NIC. Subsequently, I also found the command to support sound in the Windows 11 Lex DVM, and I added it to the show notes for that video, but here it is in case you want it. So a Lex DVM Ubuntu desktop is what we're going to talk about today. Lex DVM images are kept fairly lean on purpose to optimize size with the idea that you can add whatever apps that you need. An Ubuntu Lex DVM has the advantage of quick deployment because there is no installation process like there is with a typical VM. Lex DVMs use QEMU components and so they have their own dedicated kernel and they do not share the kernel of the host OS as is in the case of standard Lex D containers. Although Lex DVMs have a boot process, they are faster starting than a traditional VM. Let's go create a Lex DVM with a desktop interface for Ubuntu 22.04. Here I am at the command prompt for my Lex D host. And in order to see what version of Lex D you're running, you use the Lex C version command. And you can see that I'm running version 5.1, which is the latest version. You need at least version 4.0 in order to create LexD VMs. Whenever you create any LexD containers, you do so from the LexD repository. And the command here that I have, LexC image list images OS equals Ubuntu release equals jammy arch equals uh, AMD 64 will list out all of the images for Ubuntu 2204 with the AMD64 architecture. So it goes out to the image repository and it lists all those. As you can see, there's quite a few. If you look off to the right-hand side, you can see that some of these images are for containers and some of the images are for virtual machines. LexD creates containers by default on an internal network just like Docker does. So I want to be able to create them on my external network, actually my LAN. And in order to do that, I have to create a profile to do so. So I'm going to say LexC profile create untagged with the idea that this profile will be the untagged profile for the untagged LAN. Then I want to do an IP route show and I can see down here that I have some special configuration on my machine, but I know that my machine's internal address is 172.16.1.225, and it is pointing to device bridge zero. So normally you'd be pointing to a physical device like EMP4S0, but I have some other networking things going on here. Anyway, in my case, in order to create an untagged connection to that LAN, I am going to do a Lexi profile device add to my untagged profile I just created ETH0 NIC with the NIC type of Mac VLAN and the parent is going to be bridge zero. So again, your parent is going to be different according to the results of your IP route show command. So now I have a device to create my uh, network on. So now we can create our LexD virtual machine. And I'm using the command LexC launch from the images repository Ubuntu 
and in version 2204 and I want a desktop as opposed to a server. If I left the slash desktop off, it would just create me a server. And then I'm going to call this thing Ubuntu-VM. And then I have the dash dash VM command to let it know that it's going to be a virtual machine and not a regular container. And then I say profile equals default. This tells me uh, where my root disk device is stored. We did that when we created a standard LexD container. And then I'm adding to this profile on tag so that this container, this VM, will present itself out onto my main LAN. And I'm setting the memory to be 4096 megabytes or 4 gigabytes. And I'm setting my limits to be 2 CPU. So limits.cpu equals 2, 2 of my CPUs. And then boot.autostart is equal to true, which means when LexD host boots up that this VM will boot up. And then I'm saying dash dash console equals VGA, which connects me directly to the console as this thing is being built. So I hit return. It says creating Ubuntu VM, starting Ubuntu VM, and it's bringing up the console screen. And now it's doing the boot process. And here we have our Ubuntu up and running. So I click next on the live patch. I'm clicking next on this, next on this, and done. So here we have a VM up and running. I can come down here to desktop settings. I can change this to 1920 by 1080 and do an apply and say keep changes. And there we are. So on the remote viewing console, you can go up to view and select full screen. And once it goes into full screen mode, you have a full resolution of whatever your monitor is. In this particular case, we're looking at a 1080p monitor and that's why I'd set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. So if we go up to settings and we go to about, you can see here that my device name is Ubuntu VM. My hardware model says QEMU standard PC. And the reason for that is we said that with LexD VMs, we would be using QEMU components. My host is an Intel Core i7. So that's why it's seeing the hardware through to the host but I only gave it two cores and that's why it's only saying two cores here. You can see that it's Ubuntu 2204. So the default windowing system is Wayland. Now, if we go down here to monitor, system monitor, and we go up to the file system, you can see that the file system has a 10 gigabyte disk by default. So if we bring up a terminal in our VM over here, by default, if I say, who am I? You can see that it creates an Ubuntu account. And if you want to create another account, you can use sudo add user Scott and I can give Scott a password and I can grant Scott the pseudo privilege also with a pseudo user mod dash a g pseudo Scott so that would work and if I log out of this account with the log out, and I log back into Scott, you can see that it logs back in. It wants me to set up the same things again since it's a brand new account. Looks like the astronauts are practicing out there. You can hear the planes there uh, 
got the T-38s here next to NASA Johnson Space Center, so you can hear all of that. So let's log off of this account just by coming up here and doing a log out. And then I'll go ahead and leave the full screen and I'll just exit the console connection. And if I do a Lexi list, you can see that my Windows 11 VM, uh, LexDVM I created last time, uh, is stopped. But my Ubuntu-VM that we just created here is up and running. It has the local address of 172.16.1.70. And it is a virtual machine as opposed to a container. So up here you can see that test is also presented on the main LAN and it's a container. So it's not a virtual machine. So since Linux isn't picky like Windows is, I can issue a Lexi config device override Ubuntu-VM root size equals 50 gigabytes and we've just enlarged our space to 60 gigabyte or 50 gigabytes. If your VM has already started the way that mine is here, if I do a Lexi console Ubuntu-VM type equals VGA, we come back into the console, we sign back on. Once it logs in, we run monitor again. We go to file systems and you can see it's still 10 gigabytes. So the reason it's 10 gigabytes is because in order to recognize the new space, we would have had to have rebooted the VD VM. So we can do that by doing a restart. Now we do a restart. Of course it exits. I can immediately enter the console again. You can see that it's booting up. I can switch my console to full screen and there we're logged in. And of course we're logged into the Ubuntu account by default. But let's go down and do a monitor. And there we are, now we have 50 gigabytes. If we click on the app drawer, it'll list all of the applications that are installed. And as you can see, it's pretty lean. As a matter of fact, they don't even provide us a web browser in Ubuntu 2204. And I think the reason for that is they don't really like the way that uh, Firefox works in Ubuntu 2204. In any event, let's go ahead and install Firefox. We'll do an sudo apt install Firefox and you can see here that it is doing an installation of Firefox but it's not really it's going out and installing the Firefox snap which is a new way that they install Firefox in Ubuntu 2204 and for certain reasons, I would much rather have Firefox installed as a regular app package as opposed to as a snap. And also as a snap, it runs considerably more slowly. And there Firefox is installed and now we can launch our Firefox browser. And this is my complaint is that it runs a lot slower you noticed I clicked on Firefox and it takes literally forever. With Firefox up and running, I'm going to download this script, which is a script that provides RDP capability to Ubuntu. And I'm going to exit this thing. I've featured this script on the channel many times before. I'm going to CD into downloads. Do an ls and I'm going to unzip this file. 
There it's unzipped. If I do an ls, you can see the script file. So I'm going to do a chmod plus x on the script file. And then I'll do a dot slash to execute the script. It asks for my sudo password. And now it's completed. Here I am at my self-hosted instance of Apache Guacamole, which I've covered on the channel before. And you can see that I've created a profile for Ubuntu Lex DVM that makes an RDP connection using our new RDP server. You could, of course, use something else like Remina to make an RDP connection to the VM. So here we are logging into the Lex DVM with RDP. And there we are at the desktop. So in summary, we learned how to create a Lex DVM for an Ubuntu 2204 Jammy Jellyfish desktop. We saw how easy and quick it is to deploy an Ubuntu LexD machine. And Lex DVMs have the advantage of having a dedicated kernel so it is possible to run everything that you can in a typical VM or on a bare metal machine. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.